Alright, so Wreck-It Ralph came out about five years ago, and I'ma be honest, I'm a little late to making this video, but five years ago, I was only 15, so I didn't have the facilities to make this video, so we're doing it now. And I just recently watched it, and I really wanted to make a video on it, because I'ma be real, I didn't think it was that bad of a movie. I know it doesn't have the best critic score, and that's fine, but like, I still enjoyed the movie. And we can't forget, even if you don't like this movie, we did get to see Ralph stop a groomer in action. Look at their signs aren't even real! Ah! What the heck? The internet? For those of you who don't know, that's uh, Miranda Sings. She just recently had to deal with some allegations of grooming, and I'm pretty sure she did it, but who knows. But regardless, I'm here to talk about the things I didn't like about the movie today, because the things I did like aren't as entertaining, and I don't think you'll disagree. The first thing I want to talk about is the movie being super jumpy. Now, in the first one, it had a bunch of clear objectives, you know? When you went to one place, it didn't feel like there was more to be added onto a scene when it was over in the first movie. Like, everything that needed to be said in those scenes was said, and you moved on to the next one. Where in this movie, it feels like there's just a lot of jumpiness to it. It feels like they're just going from one thing to another to another within succession immediately. A few examples are how Ralph just jumps from trying to collect money in video games. Fish, wife's amulet, wizard quest, $3. Foxhole hammer, zombie crusades, $5. And making money online. creating a virus, destroying the whole internet. Experts are still trying to understand who or what the virus's intended target may be. It's just all over the place. The sequence of it just isn't as fresh as I'd like it to be. So that was just one of the first complaints I had. The second one I had was with the concept of the first movie just being completely thrown out the window. In the first movie, the reason why Ralph's game gets closed is because he's not in the game. What's the trouble, sweetheart? The game's busted. I can fix it! <gasps> the game can't function without the main baddie, and it doesn't work, so they almost unplug him. But the thing with the second movie is it seems like they forgot about that entirely. I mean, the whole movie, they're not in their game, yet that's not what gets the game shut down. The only thing that gets Vanellope's game shut down is the fact that someone broke the steering wheel. Might be time to sell short rush for parts. But Ralph's game is perfectly up and running, even though he hasn't been there for a full 24 hours. We know this because it takes about 24 hours for the whole movie events to transpire, as you can tell by their eBay bid running out in only 24 hours. Mm -hmm. Look, if you don't pay within 24 hours, you will be in violation of the unpaid item policy, you will forfeit the bid, and you will lose this item. But that was just another thing that kind of confused me. I was wondering how in this movie it was just totally negated. One of my main criticisms, however, is that the whole movie kind of just feels like a whole ad read. There's so many IPs and brands used that it just confuses the narrative with a commercial, you know? I don't think that it needed to have this much necessarily. The movie could have easily done without all the different brands and characters from other games and stuff being put into this. Now I know the first one was kind of paying homage to other games with Space Invaders and Mario and all the other Easter eggs that they included. Included, and that was nice. That level of it was nice. But in this movie, there's way too much. Almost every scene has a brand, a logo, a character that's not from the Wreck-It Ralph IP. Like with this princess scene here, it's easy to tell that at the end of the day, they're just trying to get some more buzz into the princesses because they haven't really been relevant for years. And don't get me wrong, I appreciate a good Easter egg, but at the same time, an Easter egg's supposed to be something that you're supposed to go, oh, that's cool that they added that to the movie. Not something that's jammed down your throat every 10 seconds. Like the main hub that the movie takes place in is just a bunch of ads. Here's another thing real quick. When Sugar Rush does get pulled, everyone has to find a place to live, and that's understandable, right? But why are the other racers, who are competent enough to drive a car at high speeds, having to find someone to live with like they are children? That just leaves the racers. We're like adorable. You sure are. So, any takers? Mm -hmm. Um, anyone? I get it, they might be children, but at the same time, they must have enough competence to be able to survive on their own because they can drive cars. I don't know any child that can drive a car. You have to be at least 16 or 17 to get a license where you don't have to drive with parents in the car. And obviously these kids don't have any parents in the car, so what gives? And then I remembered, oh yeah, I mean, I can drive, but 
I don't think I could survive on my own. One more thing I wanted to add on to the last topic too is, if these are all children, all incompetent, and really can't live on their own, then why is Vanellope so much more mature than all of them? She must be around the same age. I mean, she doesn't look any older at all, so what's the difference? It just seems like a cop-out. Basically, the writers are telling you that the other kids, they can't survive without parents. But Vanellope can live in a game where there is pit bulls, sharks coming out of sewers, dumpster fires, and etc. All the dangerous stuff that you wouldn't want your kids around. She can perfectly survive in that environment. It doesn't make sense to me. And the last thing that didn't make sense to me was Vanellope leaving everyone. Now, if you watch the first movie, you'll remember that Ralph almost had to commit scuba dive, if you know what I mean, to save their world. It wasn't even his game and he put his life on the line to save Vanellope. And I get it, she doesn't owe her entire life to him in the sense where everything he wants she has to do, right? But at the same time, have a little bit more respect for your friends, you know? You can't just go to the other side of the internet trying to find a whole new game and just leave everyone you knew that had your back behind. I mean, both these characters literally had a past of being completely alone and once they finally found each other's friendship, everything changed for them and got better. But at the end of the day, it seems like Vanellope just does not appreciate it nearly enough to stay. You can see how disappointed Ralph is throughout the movie too, he even sicks a whole virus and that's where Ralph Breaks the Internet comes into play. So to see that Vanellope was just treating her best friend like that was really disheartening. I mean, these characters were great, I loved this movie as a kid, so to see this sequel where Vanellope is just acting like this was very sad. I figured that the writers would take a better approach with her character, but they really did a bad job on that end part. But in my opinion, I'm not a fan of the end. Keep in mind, if you were a writer for this, I do enjoy the general movie. I'm not too butthurt over it at the end of the day, cause it's just cartoon. But the thing is, man, if you're gonna write a character that we're all gonna love, you can't make a decision like this to totally kill the vibe of the character at the end, in my opinion. But that's all I really have to talk about today. I know this video is a little different. It's not a normal gaming video like I'm supposed to be doing, but at the end of the day, it's a movie about gaming. Technically more about the internet, but regardless. I hope you had fun watching. If you like this video, let me know in the comments below and check out one of my other videos. I'll see you later.